big change around as Stefan Sarazan has got to the front of the field in the 44. In that, I suppose, in the schmozzle that went on behind the leading cars, it is Stefan Sarazan from Nick Manassian, from John Martin, from Frank Mayer, 44, 38, 25, and 23. So the leading car, that must have been Alex Brundelen who had to take the avoiding action. He's dropped all the way down to 19th position. Alex Brundle was one of the cars that went right to the left as they went into Village Corner on the first lap, John, uh, beyond the limits of the circuit. But yeah, he uh, was he was avoiding the spinning Dumbreck. That was right. uh, that was the car that we saw in uh, in the GTE categories. Uh, Ricard Leeds from Paul Leeds, Jimmy Bruni from James Walker. So those two have swapped around, but Leeds still leads in Arm. Stuart Hall from Paul Leeds, Chochi, who's at one place ahead of Paolo Roberti, so 98, 61 and 88 in Arp, 77, 51 and 66 in Pro. There is Ricard Leitz in the blue car that we're watching on the screen at the loop with you now, Paul. Yes, and uh, James Rossiter has joined in now in the Lotus number 32, the car that you said started from the pit lane. He uh, didn't come out straight away, but he has now joined in on the third lap of the race, so uh, he's going to have a long afternoon ahead of him. Leaders going through the Beckett's S's on their third lap, still with Lotterer uh, two seconds ahead of Alexander Wurtz in the Toyota, Tom Christensen a further two seconds behind in the Audi R18 Ultra, the non-hybrid car. So watching the battle for third position between Aston Martin Racing number 97 with Darren Turner on board. He's looking at the black and yellow hind quarters as they go across the Old start finish line and into cops of the GMW Ferrari now heading up the slight incline towards the Maggots Beckett's complex and there's barely a GTE car's length between them as they sweep through in this battle for third position. Plenty of curb being taken by Darren, but in fairness, ahead of him, the 66 car, James Walker is tracing a Slightly tighter line between the curves now under the hangar straight and the Aston Martin seems to have the power over the Ferraris dragging up to the back pushes out to driver's right will Darren get him on the brakes he may just be able to do that as he turns in and yes makes that position so, so track limits at turn number nine being reported to the race director uh, for one of the cars out there I didn't catch that is cops so we'll try and find out who that was for 99. 99, yeah. the uh, uh, Andrew Howard in the GTE Am Aston. What a first uh, seven or eight minutes, Paul. I, I'm sort of just about getting my breath. You forget, <laughs> don't you? I mean, I got all Le Mans emotional almost before the start of, not almost, actually did before the start of the race. Great crowd, great atmosphere. But you don't get the breathing space before the back past you again as you Absolutely. do with Le Mans. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, and it was noticeable here. There's been a steady throng of spectators walking past the box. About five minutes before, there was no more spectators walking past. They were all stuck in the grandstands. In GT, E, we've got Ricard Leitz leading in the Ferrari, in the Porsche, but only just ahead of Jimmy Broomey. They're down uh, in the uh, Luffield loop at the moment, and uh, Leitz is less than a second ahead of Jimmy Bruni in the Ferrari number 51. That's 77 and 51 leading the GTE Pro class. Into the battle at the head of that GTE Pro category is starting to look very interesting indeed. The blue Felbermeyer car, two-tone blue and black. A uh, bit of yellow on that as well, and the Tricolore stripe down the middle of Jimmy Bruni's Ferrari. Resplendent in Corsa red. And it looks to me as, as though Darren Turner is about to join that party in the Aston Martin, having just uh, made that pass for third a couple of laps ago, Paul. He's, I think, just closing in visually. Haven't put the watch on it yet as they go towards store. He's got one of uh, the prototype P2 cars between it. This lots of people trying to look stoic in the pit lanes at the moment watching the same pictures that we are as the battle for the head of gte pro heads down the hill into club and that's yes tricky double apex right yes he's not quite there is he because there's a uh, an lmp2 car Correct. between him uh, uh there so uh, in fact i think that is the rejoining uh, james uh, 
um, James Rossiter car, isn't it? It's Correct. It's the Lotus, which has got itself in between there. And in fact, he now is going through those two cars. Yes, he is, isn't he? As they turn through Village Corner, uh, and that might give uh, Jimmy Bruni a chance. Um, the Lotus there on the outside line, and uh, Ricard Leitz tucks in behind. Uh, and Jimmy Bruni, to be fair, uh, giving the Porsche a little bit of space. So, uh, yes, as far as the Aston Martin is concerned, Darren Turner has well, about 100 yards to catch up. Uh, in order to get on terms with the first and second battle in the GTE class. And look at that, the leaders are already catching up with the uh, back markers. So uh, we're on the sixth lap, and Andre Lotterer has the back end of the Labra Corvette already in his sights. And by the time they get round to you, John, uh, we're already going to have the confusion uh, of Lapery to uh, contend with as well. It's another thing that uh, doesn't happen quite as quickly at Le Mans. It's not that far away nowadays, though, is it, in it's fairness? And indeed, as you see it, so we go on board with Andrea Lotterer in the number, number one out. And he goes to the right-hand side of the Labra competition, Corvette, and then to the left-hand side of the two cars ahead of it, being the Crone Racing Ferrari and the JWA Avelia Porsche, who's made up positions from the back of the grid. And here comes Alex Vert. He wants to try and hold on to the coattails of that leading Audi as they head down into Maggots and Beckett's and already... There's about a two or three second gap between the leading Audi and the Singleton Toyota. Remember, just the one Toyota here as the leader gets caught, uh, the number two Audi rather, of Tom Christensen gets caught up behind Crone Racing and JWA Avelia Porsche. But now on the long hanger straight, the prototype, the thoroughbred can stretch its legs in the still corner. On board with Rebellion Racing number 12, Neil Yarny in fourth position, leading the privateer battle. And that is a baller for James Rossiter earlier today. And also, that uh, just an interesting opinion just being uh, floated to me by Graham Goodwin of DailySportsCar.com. And don't forget, all of their coverage of the WEC is free to view. Thanks to Nissan. And the he said it, he's wondering if they are if Toyota are deliberately trying to make Audi push harder than they want to go, knowing that Audi are on a fuel saving strategy. So once again, it's the it's the variety even possibly in the tactics here, gentlemen, that is keeping us interesting as we're watching GT cars nose to tail. We have two more pit callers, John. We have uh, the status Grand Prix Lola has called in. Uh, going past me is the uh, number one LMP car, the 26 Nissan, the G-Drive signature car, and the 25 Oak car, who I must be, I can't remember which team that is. And we're going to see the Greaves Motorsport. So, in fact, the LMP2 25 cars, ZDR Delta. The LMP2 cars are all coming in. Sorry, the 35 car. The LMP2 cars are all now coming in pretty much on similar laps. But after the Audis, who are obviously, you say, running on a long, long strategy per run. Felbermeyer and Aston Martin, absolutely. in fact, the Felbermeyer is the meat in the Aston Martin bread at the moment, Paul, going down the Wellington Street. It, it, yeah, I couldn't see any daylight, and bearing in mind that those cars are no more than 100 yards away from me, uh, there was no daylight to be seen behind the uh, Aston Martin And there. we've got a problem for the 35, guys. It's going up on the jacks. It's going back into the garage. The 35 Oak Morgan P2 car took up the fuel, changed the tyres, left the driver in, uh, who I think is... Uh, the Percy breadstick in the car at the moment. You see, he started that. But and wrong, he's yeah. now gone back into the garage. So I'll, when I find out what the problem is, I'll tell you. But that's the first car that's had to visit the garage since the race actually started. Three-car battle in the GTM for second position. The 98 Aston Martin of Stuart Hall has lost the lead. Has lost the lead there to Marco Ciocci in the 61. Uh, sorry, forgot to tell you about that. And now he's got Paolo Roberti and the other Aston, the number 99 of Johnny Adam right up his tailpipes of that uh, via Vantage. That was the battle that Paul was watching. And Mark Lociocci has pulled out a decent bit of a, a lead there, something over a second as they go down the hangar straight. So the 61 AF Waltrip car with a new driver lineup, which we expect to see hopefully for the rest of the WEC season. Talking to Matt Griffin earlier on this weekend as more P2 callers and Nick Damon. Yeah, we also picked out the number 12 car from uh, the petrol uh, rebellion engine. It's the Yarny car, isn't it? We now have the uh, 40 uh, to 42 uh, Green Zytec car, which is the, uh, the World Endurance Championship engine car, rather than the uh, ELMS car of the Brundles and Lucas Ordinez. The 24, the second, Mor the second Morgan car, the Jacques Nicolet Matthew de Hay Olivier Pla car, just getting fuel. 
Uh, away goes the 49. That's the uh, Peacock car. In comes the 41. So it's like a. This is, this is like a, yeah, this is like the, the cars are coming into the circuit. Yeah, it's a traffic jam of vehicles. That's the oak leaving. The other oak is having a quite e uh, intensive examination of the rear of the car, looking like uh, the front of the rear. So it's not a gearbox issue; it's an engine issue they've got there. And two more cars come towards me, including the Gulf car that's been so fond of uh, Andre Lotero and uh, the other P1, and there's one of the Lotus as well, low tie. So it is the P2 cavalcade, but still no sign of much move from the Audi. In fact, just now, I think the number two team will have begun to have a bit of a look at the fuel hose. Okay. Yeah, they're on the 26th lap, so uh, I would say two laps before they're in, but bear in mind that two laps is uh, barely three minutes, but now is probably the right time to be uh, deciding to make the move into the pit lane. The uh, Two Audis, one and two, separated by less than 10 seconds uh, over at the uh, Cops Corner part of the circuit at the moment. Still Lotterer from Christensen in the lead of the race. Andre Lotterer from Christensen by nearly eight seconds. Alex Verter further 36 seconds behind. Then Johnny Kane, the best of the privateer cars. It is interesting, this tactic from Toyota and a, a number of people trying to second guess us at the moment. We've got three wide going down the hangar straight as the number one of Lotterer has to go by them. There were three different classes of car that, cars there for a moment and Lotterer goes up there, the right-hand side into Stowe on a very unconventional line. Have to be careful as he comes out of it. But Oh, and someone's locked up right in front. Here comes Lotterer. Lotterer is in the pits. Now, this is more like the sort of time, Paul, we expected the P1s to come in. Yeah, exactly. 26 laps completed then for the race leader, Andre Lotterer, as uh, he comes in for his first first pit stop and I expect that to be fuel only uh, and of course being diesel it will go in uh, more slowly but there's only 58 litres to go in rather than the 68 that uh, the Toyota had to take on board. Yeah, it looks like a uh, standard stop, they're taking off a, uh, a, wind, a windscreen uh, tear off. Uh, the number two team is ready, I assume that they've gone through there haven't they, uh, for doing do one more lap or are, they on the, or are they that far behind now, I've missed the uh, distance but certainly the uh, Lottery car is, is goes away. That seemed like a quick, that seemed to me like a quicker stop. It seemed that they got the uh, diesel fuel in quicker than the petrol went in, which shouldn't be the case because I think the petrol flows be greater. But it looks that, that it does look like the number two car is going to do an extra lap. Alex Wurtz uh, was in the pits for 59 seconds when he came in, and I'm waiting for uh, Lotterer car to uh, break the beam. There it is, 54 seconds. So uh, yeah, five seconds quicker in the pits for Andre Lotterer, but it wasn't quick enough for him to take the lead back because the uh, lead has gone to, well, the lead has gone to Tom Christensen in the number two Audi, which hasn't yet made its pit stop. But the number seven Toyota, more importantly, is ahead of number one Andre Lotterer 32, in the Audi. 32, James Rossiter with engine problems before the race. That's why they didn't get on the grid, and now he's had a spin. He's got the right-hand side door open on that car as well, off the circuit on drivers right at uh, Brooklands by the look of it to me. Waved off by one of the ever helpful marshals here. Um, great, great attitude by all of the men and women in orange. And out on the pit lane, Nick, the second of the Audi stops seems to be imminent. And indeed, as I say that, Tom Christensen dives into the pit lane. Yeah, also, this time, they've laid out tyres. They didn't even bother laying out tyres for the number one car. I know it doesn't mean they're going to take them, but they haven't, they've actually laid them out, which they didn't do for the number one. Uh, I'm just next to me, about, two, about six feet away, is Alan McNish, who just gave me a wry smile, as in, this isn't quite going to plan either, as far as Toyota are concerned, or the number one car. The tear-off comes off. The uh, very exciting dry brake drink bottles go in for a change of uh, uh, refreshment for Tom Christensen. The fuel flows in in its normal lethargic diesel manner. Uh, I don't think they're intended to change the tyres. They just seem to take more of a kind of a precaution than the number one team. We're obviously quite happy with it was. And do they have it? They just sat there with the tyres. Off goes Tom. That also seemed like a reasonably quick stop. So uh, I will say that's probably another 54 55, and they'll re rejoin the fray in third. Sorry, uh, was that tyres or no tyres? Did you no, they, 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 what they did, they actually put tyres out, whereas the number one team didn't even bother putting tyres out in a kind of like, we might need them. So uh, they took them out, they, they put them out and then, then rolled them back in again. 
Andre Lotterer took on board 56 litres of fuel out of his maximum allotment to 58, so he wasn't going to go any further <laughs> no, uh, on that lot. He wouldn't have got another lap out of it. Uh, Tom Christensen, he also took 56, 56.9 litres. Wow. But he was entitled to 60 litres. So ah, because he's not hybrid, of course. Because uh, he's not hybrid, he's allowed a little bit more. Uh, but he uh, got the extra lap in. So uh, Tom Christensen uh, did 27 laps plus the formation lap. Uh, Andre Lotterer did 26 laps plus the... That was 41 the, at the yeah. final corner. Uh, plus the formation lap. Uh, Alexander Wurtz came in and on, on after just 22 laps, uh, but he now leads the race again um, to the tune of seven seconds, uh, which is a little bit less than he was leading the race by uh, when he came into the pits. He was leading the race by 10 seconds when he came into the pits. Um, so we've uh, had 50 minutes of the race and um, we haven't really proved very much yet, have we? Well, you see, you <laughs> do like to have things cut and dried early, don't you? Uh, 26 also being pinged for track limits as well. Uh, back the cops again, turn number nine. Uh, so as it stands then, with uh, just under 10 minutes to go to the first hour being completed, uh, we're showing Alex Verts leading again by seven seconds, as Paul mentioned. So it's pretty much a, a wash after the first pit stop cycle. Although the Toyota coming in very early and taking nearly full fuel load would tend to suggest that it didn't have a full load when it started. May have been a conservative call by them and maybe even a slightly softer tyre, so they went light at the start. As Andrea Lotter had taken some time out of Alex Verts at the head of the, the field. 7 1 and 2 are the works teams at the head of the field. Verts, Lotter, and Christensen on board the Toyota Audi and Audi in first, second, and third. It is still in fourth position. The number 12 Rebellion Lawler, the Toyota powered Coupe, different engine from the Toyota in the seven car. Nothing uh, shared between those two cars. This is a customer engine program, different block, etc. And he has just uh, two seconds between himself and Johnny Kane in the 21 Stracker HPD with Honda Power. And then it's 13 seconds back to Andrea Bellici, the teammate of Neil Yarny, the 13 car in sixth position. Peter Dumbreck has fought his way back to seventh after that first corner, first lap incident. And in fact, he's still that 30 seconds uh, that he was when I mentioned that he'd got back to seventh place before. Paul said, yes, he's back in place, but he's 30 seconds behind the guys ahead of him. And he's still 30 seconds uh, behind those guys. In P2, Stefan Sarazan leads for Starworks ahead of ADR Delta's John Martin, 44 from 25. And Sarazan's just crossed the line. Where is John Martin? Answer, uh, some distance still to come around. There he is. He's 10 seconds behind. Pierre Caffer is third in the 49 peak on red, white and black car. He's just crossed the line uh, another five seconds further back. But he's got Frank Mayer for company in the black. Signatech Nissan, the 23 car, is in fourth place in P2. Alex Sims is in the pit, so that's both. No, sorry, scrub that. The 32 car I saw in the pits. But Alex Sims is in the pits in the stateless Lola Coupe. Yeah, that's, not, that, that's not a standard one, that's an extra stop. He's already been in once. Right, thank you, uh, Nick. Uh, Ricard Leeds leads from pole position from Darren Turner in second in the Aston Martin. 77 and 97, the GT Pro. Uh, that's blue, Felbermeyer Porsche. 77 is the slightly wider one. Actually, quite a lot wider one, two inches plus wider. 77, 97 and 51, separated by just under five seconds in that battle for first, second and third in GTE Pro and GTE and Marco Ciocci has fought his way from third on the grid to lead, uh, but he's only got six tenths of a second between himself and Stuart Hall in the 98 Aston Martin with Paolo Roberti and Johnny Adam uh, still just, uh, well, a tenth and three seconds further back and that gaggle of cars has been scrapping for what seems like an age, and in fact, just being passed by one of the Audis, I think that's Andrea Lotterer down the national start-finish straight and into Cops, as we're in fact on board with Paolo Roberti at the moment, who it looks to me has got past. That's very interesting. So the AF Corsa and Aston Martin racing battle has gone the way of Aston Martin for second position in the GTE Pro category.
Giancarlo Fisichella has given best to Stefan Mucker, much as Jimmy, much as Jimmy Bruni did, but much later on in the stint to Darren Turner. So Stefan doing a good job. The Aston was two seconds longer in the pit than the Ferrari, and uh, in the tightness of battle there, and the Aston having a look at another Ferrari. That's not for position, but he wants to get through and get after Mark Lee. The uh, Aston two seconds longer in the pit lane and with the closeness of uh, competition in GTE, they need to look at that. They cannot afford to be losing two seconds and more every pit stop. Uh, absolutely right, uh, John. That's uh, something else to uh, keep an eye on. I'm running out of uh, desk space here now with uh, <laughs> notes. But, um, we should explain, <laughs> Paul, that you have been working with Alchemel Systems, the guys who do the timing. And if you've got a link to the World Wide Web, and you go onto the WE site, that you can you can watch some of the facilities that Paul have. But you've been working quite closely with the guys, and um, you're actually doing some testing effectively of their of their system, aren't you? They, they are extremely uh, helpful, and moreover, they are extremely willing to change their system on the basis of feedback received, not just from me, but from the teams and from the race direction, um, uh, in the in an effort to uh, provide better uh, better data. Um, the problem comes when um, Team A makes one suggestion, Team B makes another suggestion, race direction says, no, we don't want that. Um, so they, they have to balance the needs of many people. It's a bit like you when you get emails in, John, saying, uh, can you put a music bed on uh, the hourly updates or something like that? No, no, can you take it off? No, well, can, yeah, you, exactly. can you do the Same numbers sort of and the thing. names? No, just but, the numbers. But uh, Alchemel are very receptive to all of that. So I have nothing but uh, credit for uh, Pepe, who is uh, the chief timekeeper. Um, on the subject of that... <gasps> well, 51 on. and the Aston Martin very close together again that was Stefan Mucker I think taking second place there we got a replay and also the number two Audi of Tom Christensen now in second place of course because they haven't stopped getting a little bit too close to the competition going through store sorry Paul carry on uh, yeah just to say the uh, Toyota which came into the pits it took on tires it also took on 68 litres 68.7 litres of petrol um, and again, that just leaves something over four litres in the tank. So uh, they weren't going to get a whole lap out of that. Uh, so the Toyota seems to be restricted to about 23 laps okay. uh, on its uh, fuel. Fine. Uh, you're listening to RadioLeMond.com. Coverage of the fourth round of the WEC at Silverstone. It's been a brilliant hour and a half or thereabouts so far. Four hours and 34 minutes still to go. Powered by Nissan and in association with Sim Raceway, Online Racing World. Hello everybody in Sonoma, getting ready for the IndyCar race, who I know are tuning in to us uh, in the early hours. Uh, very early hours, they'll be uh, getting into the track a bit uh, later on, but I know there are one or two people tuning in to find out how uh, Sim Raceway Pro Driver Alan McNish is doing. His car is in second position and driven by his teammate at the moment and uh, as a lot of you know I'm involved with Mobile One The Grid on various TV channels and we've got a feature on the real versus virtual world the Audi R8 LMS much beloved of sports car enthusiasts as uh, James Safronas of GMG will be driving both the real and the virtual cars and we've sent a crew out to see just how close to real life Sim Raceway is. You'll see that on the Mobile One The Grid in September. A quick uh, mention that uh, in P2 it's still Stefan Sarazan from John Martin by about uh, three tenths of a second I think at the moment. That one's really closed up. In fact there it is on the grid and in fact the picture there would suggest that that has just changed yes it has the ADR Delta has gone through into the lead so John Martin has fought his way through and displaced the Starworks car of Stefan Sarazen hello to UK Audi driver Ollie Jarvis how are you doing mate? I'm very well thank you bet you wish you were out there right now yeah, you're not wrong. We'd love to be out there. You know, it's, it's hard coming to watch, but, you know, because you just want to be in the car. But it, it's great to be here and sort of see the atmosphere. And, and also, what a fantastic race so far. 
First of all, I mean, I don't know if you were out there on the grid, we were listening to what Nick was saying, but even in our hermetically sealed box, the atmosphere on the grid was spine-chillingly good. Absolutely. I've never seen the front grandstands packed for a sports car race like this. It's always a good atmosphere on the grid, but I think what surprised me most was coming in this morning, queuing to get in the track, yep. you know, the people everywhere. It's, it's fantastic to see and, and great for sports car racing. Um, how has your year been since Le Mans? Obviously, we talked to you then. Uh, we know that you are doing some more racing for, for Audi. Um, what have you been doing since Le Mans? So I had a, a couple of GT races. Um, mixed results, really. We're, we're struggling a little bit with the performance. But, um, you know, we came away last weekend with a fourth place, considering we started last on the grid after a puncture in race one. It wasn't Where about, was that? That was in Slovakia, right? Oh, yes, of course. And uh, was, next yeah. week we're off to Russia. So, um, you know, keeping me busy, but I have to say itching to get back in the LMP1 car. Uh, PCOM in Pierre Coffer, uh, in, out of third place in P2. We'll keep an eye on that, and Pierre's out of the car. That bright yellow racing helmet, very uh, always very distinctive. Uh, when are you next to the prototype for racing rather than testing? <laughs> well, it's a great testing, unknown. Yeah, it's a great unknown. Testing coming up later on in the year, and then uh, I guess a few discussions to be had for next year. But, um, you know, I'm hopeful that you'll see me back in the car again at Le Mans. Um, the rest of my program, you know, Still, like I say, a lot of discussion to be had, but I'm very hopeful you'll definitely be seeing me back in the car. Just uh, watching the action, which is, as ever, close on the circuit. The uh, Oak Morgan and the 23 Signature Tech Nissan getting very close together there. Um, what's it like being... Uh, um, I'm, I'm hearing that the 35 Oak problem was a starter issue. Thanks, Graham Goodwin. What's it like being part of the Audi family? We hear people talk about the Audi family a lot. And, and, you know, clearly you've driven in, in different forms of racing for Audi for quite some time. So, you know, you're an established member of that family now. What's it, what's it like as a driver? I think a lot of people just assume that it's, it's sort of a media spiel as such, but that's not the case at all. There really is. I mean, Dr. Ulrich done a fantastic job. When he's brought drivers on, it's very important for him that it's, the people have gelled. And he's worked very hard on this, and there really is a sense of community within Audi. So, you know, you hear supporting the team but even at Le Mans you want your car to win but you really feel that you're part of a, a bigger yes. team and a bigger picture uh, Tom Christensen sorry no Andre Lotter just getting pinged there for going off the track at, uh, at turn nine there's big wide open we've got a driver here well, that's the big wide open spaces here at Silverstone as a racing driver how disciplined do you have to be to stay within the white lines because clearly you can go off here with without getting damage potentially getting a little bit of a make the right choice Sam rather hung himself out there on the outside of the corner the Ferrari did what the heavy GT car had to do and drifted away from the apex Sam very sensibly got off the power but has given up the position to Pierre Caffer to Olivier Pla I'll get it right in a moment sorry it's late in the race oh Sam will not be happy about that and expect that uh, Jota Zytek to really be pushing on Nick Damon, all quiet in the pits at the moment. It's very, very quiet, actually. It's a, it's, I, don't, I think the, a few people brought their stops forward or, uh, or accelerated off that safety car, and now we are waiting as everyone is trying to get by on perhaps just one more stop. So that means that the, uh, the GTs can come in any time in the next sort of 10 minutes. They'll be wanting to come with an hour to go. Uh, and the LMPs will try and get to within about 45 minutes to go, and then they'll have their last stop and run to the flag, John. Yeah, great. It is a beautiful evening at Silverstone. Thank yeah. you to everybody who's turned out, by the way, here at the track. I, I realise that not everybody will be able to stay to the end. It's quite a, a commitment for a six-hour race. Having said that, I have not seen very many cars leaving. And it is a bank holiday tomorrow. Oh, so, good uh, point. You don't, don't have to don't go e to work. Don't even have to be back, at, uh, be back early to uh, bath the children before, and you know. I've, I've heard there's going to be a really good podium ceremony as well. I, I've yes. heard the person doing the podium ceremony oh, is very good. He's brilliant, podium ceremony, or uh, uh, speaky person. <laughs> speaky. I, it's I, not I, a good start, is it? I don't even know what I am. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm the only one in the circuit who just wishes that the uh, we'd get a little bit of cloud cover for uh, the last hour of this race. Are you cooking? <laughs> yes. Gas Mark III, well, Sun Mark III. <laughs> I am told rather cheekily by Gerard Naveau, who's the man at the head of the WEC. He made a point of uh, talking to us this morning and 
warning us about next year's event here. Now, he didn't give us any details, but he said, if you think this has been good this year, wait till next year, there's something very special planned. And he teased us with that and has said no more. That'll be the Silverstone 12 hours we were talking about. Well, then. hey, mate, I, you know, I'm not sure, but whatever, I mean, they'd have to go some to beat what we've had here today, the atmosphere, and thanks to, as I said, thanks to the spectators for so much of that, uh, the organisation, the marshals, and the backup from everybody here at Silverstone, from the guys on the gate all the way across, has been brilliant, and thank you to everybody who's helped out to make this event an event. I really was goosebumped me at the start of this race. And, you uh, showed me your arm, you were. I don't, seriously, I, I don't know what it was. There was just something when I looked out and was looking at the TV pictures, the packed grandstands. And thank you, by the way, for the ovation that you gave our Olympic athletes here at the circuit. That was uh, very touching. And if we're going to make this better next year, I can't imagine what we're going to be doing. But I'm happy to speculate on this week's show. <laughs> You no, John, you're not that type. Yeah, I, th well. I, think, I think your fight is actually in the, uh, the, the, if you look on the TV guide or the radio guide, it's the, it, you have, speculation is actually key, the key point of the whole thing. Yes, it is. It's the four information, that's for sure. Now, here is, uh, here is Christensen trying to get his lap back from the leader, Paul. He's up behind the leader now as they come through cops and head down to maggots. And how easy or difficult is Marcel Fessler going to make this? I have a suspicion that he's got a slight advantage pumping onto the back straight, onto the hangar. Oh, I can't do that because I've just swapped the channels over. Nick, sorry about that. Give me one second. Nick Damon down the pit lane. <laughs> Uh, so while we were listening to uh, uh, Olympic heroes, we've become uh, one of the world's biggest motorsport heroes. Uh, multi, multi, eight times or nine times on Le Mans, I keep forgetting, eight times Le Mans champion Tom Christensen just came in for a completely standard stop. Fuel only, didn't take the tyres, which is going to mean that when uh, Alex comes in and out for his shorter stop, they're going to be very, very close on the roads. So they certainly aren't stroking at home. They're still really pushing half a second overall, John. And, and uh, Tom Christensen there, 53 seconds in the pits. 49 litres put in, which meant that he still had about 10 litres left in the tank. Uh, and yet it was a 29 lap stint for Christensen. I was getting a bit concerned because uh, whilst it was great listening to the Olympians, um, I was worried that uh, Tom Christensen was staying out well, too well, long. Not, but not, not, actually, was... not necessarily, Paul. They're, they're, they're just fueling to the end. Yeah. So no. they, won't, they, won't, they won't need to brim the tank. Exactly. Um, so, but what the point was that he managed to um, he managed to make the fuel last for 29, 29 laps. Admittedly, that included the safety car. But uh, no, you're right, Nick. Uh, it didn't have to be fully fully fueled up. Um, but it does mean that the, he was able to use the fuel that was in the car oh, yeah, whilst the safety car was out. Top is always very economical. I think it's interesting. I said to you before the race, I thought the ultras would go longer, and you said you, you weren't so sure. But it's, they kept that advantage from Spa where they could go one or two short circuit laps further. Um, unfortunately, the, 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 uh, the way that things have fallen, it's not fallen quite right for the ultra car, but they now have a real chance of fighting for second. The battle for seconds, I think it's going to be really, really on after the final stop for the Toyota in about 20 minutes' time. Uh, well, that's right. That's going to be the, uh, the crucial thing, is when and for how long the Toyota comes in. Uh, and then the second crucial thing is whether the hybrid Audi, the number one car, Andre Lotterer, can make it through to the flag. Because you posed the question, uh, it's going to be a 48-minute stint for uh, Andre Lotterer. Um, but I think by just tempering his lap time a little bit, he should be able to make that through to the flag uh, without another stop. But uh, Audi, Paul, think the Toyota will take less fuel than the number two Audi on its final stop, around about seven seconds. Um, I don't that. think I don't think either Audi will need to make another stop. Okay. Um, there that is came a... in from Martin Pass just a couple of minutes ago. Yes. Sorry, I went quiet there. I was allowed to hold an Olympic gold medal. Oh, that's not fair. And oh. I'm, I may not I may not recover from that for quite some time. But it's <laughs> not even mine, and I'm getting emotional about it. Good God, I don't know how these guys have, uh, have managed to keep going, having won that through their own efforts, through their, their lifetime of sport and achievement. Uh, we've got, what, 36 minutes left to go, still battles in the classes. So, uh, Stefan Sarazan has come into the pit lane in the leading HPD, the Starworks car. And that is the P2 leader in eighth position overall. Hopefully, Nick, that looks pretty uh, 
pretty standard. Yeah, that's quite standard. So he's, they, the, they got past the ADR car just on the stagger of stops because yes. the ADR car was in about uh, while you were talking to the canoeists. Our oh, gold medal canoeist, I should say. Yeah. It's, it's, it's an extra stop. It's one extra stop from them. Uh, the Toyota guys look fairly relaxed in the pit lane the last time we saw them. I can't get my heart rate back down. I cannot get my heart rate back down. It's quite remarkable. Johnny Palmer's in the studio with me. Nothing to do with motor racing, but that is a fantastic couple of guys there, uh, both Tom and Etienne. Well, I, I saw th things around their necks, and I thought, oh, they're just passes for the event. The gold medals won't be with them. You know, they'll be stowed away somewhere else back at their homes. And then they, both of them pulled out gold medals, and so I've <laughs> held one, you've held one, uh, and we've had our photograph taken. Quite incredible. I didn't expect that at all, John. Uh, it's, I'm completely blown away from it. I was never more proud than what we did in the Olympics, staging it and the way we competed and the way everybody supported it. Uh, Jean Chirouz then has taken over the lead in the ADR car on the pit stop uh, and that will be a battle to the flag because we've seen those guys pretty close together. Next time they come round I'll give you a, a rundown on that as we are moving in towards the last half hour. Still Audi number two from Audi number one from the number 21 HPD Honda of Danny Watts as far as the Mitchell and Green X challenge clean fast and efficient is concerned how's things going in GT for that car uh, 98 Eduardo 98 yeah we'll, uh, check that car as it comes through see if uh, Actually, you might be right. It is 99. Yeah, it is. It's my fault. Sorry. Andrew Howard. Yep. At the wheel of that. That's a shame for the ice cream magnate, Beach <laughs> Dean. I had some of his strawberry on uh, Friday. Very good indeed. Would an ice cream magnet stick to the freezer rather than the fridge? Thank you. Uh, you'll I'm be going to the podium shortly, won't you? Oh, thank you very much. With any luck. <laughs> Just seven minutes and 52 seconds. We'll get some uh, reaction from the pit lane before Nick disappears up to uh, the pits. And again, gentlemen, I remind you, spirit of the meeting, uh, the Robin Goodman Award uh, for, from RadioLeMond.com. Completely unofficial. There's no trophy to be handed over, but uh, can be anybody you like. And I will take... A, I'll give you another couple of minutes before we uh, take a... Take your noms for that. I'm just watching that battle. Stefan Mucker, he's got it down to 5.8 seconds between himself and Bertolini for third place in pro. And Danny Watts is down to six and a half seconds last time around to himself and the 13 Lola Coupe of Andrea Baliki. There's still only eight seconds between Sarazan and Sharuz, but he's, well, he's gained another second last time around. So that one, and that's for the leading class, remember. I think time is running out for Stefan Sarazan, and Jean Chirouz may just have enough to hold him off had it been the six hours and ten minutes of Silverstone. It, that might have been a different story. 17 seconds between Christensen and Wurtz. As Christensen does a 46-1 to a 49-4 for Alex Wurtz. And it's 58 seconds between first and second between uh, Andre Lotterer and Alexander Wurtz. So uh, Wurtz slower on that lap, but that was an exceptional one. Uh, most of the time he has been lapping more quickly. Uh, it's got it down. Uh, it's, it's sort of staying consistent over the last six laps, but uh, it's still very close indeed. And uh, you were talking about the amount of traffic that's still out there. I mean, we've had very, very good reliability, yes. John. Uh, very few retirements uh, for any reason. Uh, throughout the race they've had very good re um, reliability but that of course means that there's a lot of traffic still about which means that people are still having to take care they still have to uh, make sure that every overtaking move is a clean overtaking move phil rennick says just realized the beach stream ice cream car was a 99 was that intentional of course it is <laughs> of course it is uh, the 
last five the crowd once again has packed into the start line grandstands and in front of the start start line grandstands on the bleachers here on the international start finish straight down towards turn number one championship implications for the results should it stay as it is as the crew of the number one audi will take over the drivers championship in the world championship audi will clinch the manufacturers title in the world championship if it stays the way it is but stracker will overtake jrm no yes. they won't no they oh, won't no, sorry they well, they might do. Dog, How dog many points do they down. need? Because he's now only 4.6 seconds between Danny Watts and Andrea Baliki. And Baliki had a slightly faster lap last time, so it must have been even closer before I look back at the screen. Stefan Mucker is now just three seconds behind Bertolini in the battle in the pro category of the GTE. Oh my goodness, this is not finished by any stretch of the imagination. Another two seconds trimmed away by Stefan Mugger, who is driving like a man possessed. The Audi flags are beginning to... ...of the number 71 Ferrari, and in uh, Danny Watson's case, the number 13 Lola Rebellion. It's come down to this, the last minute and 45 seconds. Andre Lotterer leads by almost a minute, but the battle's in the classes for the private ears here on Radio Le Mans, brought to you powered by Nissan and in association with Sim Raceway, Baliki from Watts under three seconds. And for the last step on the podium in the GT Pro category, now under a second. I reckon it's under two seconds between Baliki and Watts. And as the Ferrari and Aston go through, I'll put that at 1.2 seconds. So you can shake it out when it comes out on the uh, timing at the end of the hangar straight where there's a split. And we're into, or at least when, yes, we the, leader? the last lap, aren't we? The uh, race leader is coming into the loop at the moment, so he is on his last lap. Yes, indeed. Last lap graphic has come up on the timing screen. And it is Andrea Lotterer onto the Wellington Strait. All very well and good with 44 seconds. Time will elapse on this lap, so the next time by will be the chequered flag and the six hours of Silverstone, the fourth round of the FIA WEC, will then be scored. But before then, Danny Watts has got another lap. He'd come past the line here. He's down to around about a second for the win in the privateer category. And that is big news. Sarazan is still seven seconds back from Jean Chirouz. Jean's done a great job in this last in to stay ahead of the fastly experienced Stefan Sarazan. And Stefan Mucha has just done the fastest lap of the race for the Aston Martin number 97 in his quest. And he's within half a second. He's within half a second of Andrea Bertolini for he's, third place on the podium. Yeah, he's got a bit of a toe from the Murphy Prototypes car. That was clever as he came down the Wellington Strait. The Murphy Prototypes car was going past uh, and Mucha managed to get himself into the toe. Uh, that helped him and has got him right now onto the tail of the Ferrari, the uh, number 71 Bertolini-driven Ferrari. And they need to stay ahead of Lotterer so they get the extra they're, they're, lap. They're all on the last lap now. They're all on the last lap. Lotterer's ahead of both of them. Is he? Yeah. Oh, what a shame. Yes. He's gone past them. That means that... Yeah. You've, got, you've got Lotterer any moment now, John. He's coming out of the final corner. This will be the World Championship for manufacturers for Audi. They're on the pit lane. They're waving the flags. There are the cheers from the Joost Audi crew. But what about the battle in the GT categories? Mucker and Bertolini are together coming down towards us. There goes the second place car, James Walker. There goes the Stracker. And he has it. Oh, he's pulled right up along. It was six tenths of a second between Baliki and uh, Watts at the line for the Privateer Cup. And I'm still waiting to see where are Bertolini and Mucker. They haven't They're come through. Coming into club now. Looking across to our left, we'll only see them as they hit the line. I can't uh, tell you how close they are as they come out. Oh, it's a spin! It's a spin! Bertolini's been turned around at club corner. Just got the picture of it in the dying moments of the lap. And he's stuck in the gravel track. Trap and where is Mucker? There he is. The 97 car will go through into third place. Andrea Bertolini will be stuck there. Jimmy Bruni still to finish. Alex Verts come through in second place ahead of Tom Christensen. 
Well, it was drama right at the end. And Davidson still sidelined after that injury at Le Mans. There goes Tom Christensen. They will give up the they will give up the lead in the championship for drivers. But drama at the very last corner and beached in the kitty litter. And down the outside, Mugger was looking very racy. He gets position on the outside and there's contact in the braking area between the pair of them and it's contact twice. That is going to have to be looked at from both cars. As Stefan Mugger appeared to have position on the outside but was trying to go the long way around. And there is G Jimmy Bruni going across the line to win that category. Nick Damon. Yes, down with the celebrations.